Pittsburgh Steeler fans. Welcome back to another episode of Steeler Stat Geek. Coming at you once again is behind the steel curtain deputy editor Dave Schofield. And joining me, as always, is the Big Brother Rich. Big Bro Sco, how you doing? Doing well. How are you this evening? I'm I'm doing as good as I can, just dealing with some injuries and things of that nature and whatnot. Well, you know, you're not as young and spry as you used to be. Yeah, I know. It was funny. I was actually having an interesting conversation with, with, with my kids this evening over dinner about uh, uh, reminiscing about sleeping in the bed of my truck at various places. Yes, um, I remember when you used to do that. I, I, I used to do that when we crazy. camped. One time when we were camping uh, down at the beach, uh, I did that one time. Uh, and what my wife said is, uh, could you imagine doing that at this age where you, where you have to, every little thing, it's like, oh, my side hurts, my back hurts, or whatever, just because I laid funny. So uh, so there you go. Uh, yes, dilly dilly. We've got a lot of people dilly chiming dilly. in with the dilly dilly. So we're, uh, we're coming a couple minutes early tonight because, frankly, I'm tired and I want to go to bed. <laughs> so we're going to, we just thought we'd get rolling a little bit before nine since we were both ready to go. I don't want to say that I'm tired and want to go to bed, but you know, last week by the time we got done, I got cleaned up, got upstairs. Yeah, it was getting a little late, so yeah. Well, well, you know, we had some technical difficulties and stuff like that, but uh, I had some technical. Difficulties. Yeah, but we, hey, we got to straighten out. Looks like we're doing good this week, and uh, we're going to dive into this topic here in just a minute. But you guys might see me get a little bit distracted during this show because I'm going to keep checking my phone because I'm looking for the update. The last update I got was an hour ago. And I'm I'm I'll go ahead and share it by uh, ESPN's Dan Graziano that said the CBA talks between owners and players here in Indianapolis have entered a third hour. Player reps are in town and prepared to vote once the meeting ends. Frankly, no idea if it's a good sign or a bad sign that the meeting is still going on. Me, I sent this to one Jefferson Hartman, and this was an hour ago that this was sent out. Uh, no update since. So it is just before 9 p.m. on Tuesday, if you're listening to this in podcast form, to be like, oh, wait, I heard about that news. Well, we don't have that news right now. But if we get that news during the show, we're going to say what happened. I sent this to Jefferson Hartman, or to Jeff Hartman. I think Brian calls him Jefferson Myron Hartman. Um, to say, this is the deal. He's And he's like, I'm a glass half full guy. I look at this as a good thing because they're still talking. I would, that's exactly how I felt as well, is that if they're still talking after, you know, going into a third hour of it, that's pretty good. Just because if it was, if they were nowhere close, they would know they're nowhere close and say like, Hey, this ain't going to happen. We're going to walk away till next year is what the players would do. Now I know a lot of people have some strong opinions on it. A lot of people say, this is a terrible deal for the players. I don't see that. I, I mean, I'm not siding with the owners. I just don't see why it's such a bad deal for the players. The, the owners were giving up a little more than I seen them. Way more than, the than I thought they would. So, Way um, more than I thought they would. Again, not saying that it is the best deal for the players, but I was pretty impressed with how the owners came out on this one. That they, you know, I mean, they were asking for something. I mean, come on here, the owners. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, they're owners. Well, I think I mentioned this on um, on the preview. Is I actually responded to a tweet by, um, by I think he's the player rep for Green Bay. He's the offensive lineman, and I can't say his name. I screw it up. People even spelled it out phonetically for me in the live chat, and now I don't remember. I just know he's the same first name as me. Um, I keep wanting to say Bugatti, but I know that's not right. Um, that said, oh wow, there's 1,700 players in the league, and we get 48 percent, and the owners there's 32 of them, and they get 52 percent. That seems about right. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa! But those owners are each employing, you know, almost 4,000 employees because of the team. So if you really think about it, 52 percent is is from like 115,000 people, and 48 percent is you know, 1,700 players. So if you look at it that way, because they've got to pay everyone. I yeah. mean, the owners aren't, that's not all profit for them. They have to yeah, use that paying, money they're, to, they're not to pay their people. Like they're, they're not paying them like what players make, but. Oh yeah, they're not making, because the because the players are getting such a large chunk. Well, but I'm not saying they don't deserve a large chunk, because if yeah. it's not for the, no, I mean, but, people, uh, people, people don't come to games to watch the owners. They come right. to see the players. Correct. But a lot of people do fail to realize that that 52% that the owners get, it's not like the owners are putting off 52% of that in their pocket. Exactly. 
Yes. So. That, that's that's actually going into paying everyone else. I mean, that's how they pay the coaches. That's how they pay um, all the training staff, all the front office staff, all the, you know, like we said, the hot dog vendors and everything like that. So, or just all the various things. So you got to kind of keep that in perspective. You could, once again, this is a stat show. I know, although Darren says we need to change it to the Scobro show. I thought it was going to change that over the summer, but we haven't changed it yet. It, but what, what's, what's the matter? What, what's the name of the show, Rich? What? It doesn't Darren, matter what the name of the show yeah. is. Like we what? said last huh? week. <laughs> oh, and, 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 um, uh, Dennis, I'm not just say Dennis knows as he commented on there that you know the owners make a ton of money. Yes, Dennis, the owners do still make a ton of money. A ton of money. Don't and get so us wrong. The players. <laughs> but and so are the players. And the owners probably still make more, you know, overall, yeah, you know, they get more in their pockets than players, but they do not just get that 52% yeah. and walk. But uh, but you also have to look at it as the owners are investing money because look at owners in other sports. Now, NFL, they don't have it like this, that they actually lose money. You know, this is an investment because the players aren't going to lose money. They're going to get paid. There's yeah. no chance of, oh, if things don't work out or people stop coming or we can't sell the merchandise or the TV contracts, which that's where the money is. And that's why the CBA is being pushed what it is right now is all about that TV money. Um if, if those things fall through, then the owners, they're the only ones set to lose money, to like go in the hole. The players don't go in the hole. They just don't get paid. So, you know, with more risk comes more reward. Um, I'm not asking, you know, they're like, they're like they say, it's billionaires fighting with millionaires. Um, just is what it is. But all, all I know is that it seems like the owners were really only asking for that. 17th game and everyone's like oh they're asking for too much i'm like they're asking for a 17th game they're taking away a preseason game and then everyone was complaining about oh well what the money for that 17th game is capped at two hundred fifty thousand dollars a player people aren't looking at the right way that's for people that's for players that haven't renegotiated the deal Correct. from the time this cba starts and when they would actually add the game which at the earliest could be 2022 i think it could possibly be the next year um so there's going to be a lot of deals redone then. And if you're a big name player and a high contract player, you will then have incentive to read, to, to, to just do, the deal. yeah, to read a good, not, not that you're changing the deal. Say, Hey, let's, uh, maybe I can make it a little bit more cap friendly for you all, but let's include the clause that says what's going to happen with the 17th game. That, that provision is in there to protect the guy that was drafted last year. And right. it's on the four year deal as a rookie. Correct that they actually get a they will actually get paid very representative in that last game that's who that's aimed for so many people are so caught up with with things that have been reported about the CBA that they're thinking about the top you know 15 to 20% of the league you forget over half the league plays on minimum salary yes and part of this deal is upping the minimum salary 20% i mean would you take a 20% raise right now I'd love to take a 20% raise you know, right a now. A 20% raise just in the minimums. And that's not even add another game. They're just bumping up the salary. That's really fantastic. And I mean, that's why I'm, that's why I say if this goes to a vote of the players, I think it passes because the majority of the players are guys that are just trying to get along in the league or on minimum salary. And this deal was great for them. I don't yeah. see any problem with this deal. And the owners are giving up more than they, I mean, the fact that not all the owners voted for it tells you that some feel they're giving up too much. Um, and the reason they're willing to give it up to, is to give up too much is because they want to get that new TV contract sooner than later. Um, with, I mean, you honestly have to say part of it is it's an election year. That's, I mean, I read a r report today that that's part of the reason that the owners want to lock in their TV deal before anything majorly changes with the economy, if anything were to change. Right. So that's, that's just kind of how, and so the owners have a lot of incentive to get this done. And I don't think the players will I'd, get near the deal. Next I'd like year. to know what owners voted against. I would, I'd like to know too. If you were, if you had to pick a couple who voted against, um, I don't know that it would be the Roonies because I think they're no. all there for for um for paying the players more, especially at the bottom. You know, yeah. Which, I, I, uh, I bet the Roonies voted up. Mm -hmm. You think Kraft yeah. voted down? Uh, I bet Jerry Jones voted down, probably because he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to give up a nickel. 
Yeah, neither does Dean <laughs> Snyder. So those yeah. are the top. Those are my top two to know. Yeah, what those that's, guys, that's, how they that's like a pretty their good money. point. So yeah, so that that's the thing, and 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 people are like, oh, um, Lance was texting me because, in case you all don't know, he he uh, he knows Max Starks. That's why Max has been on a show before. He's actually Max is actually married to a relative of Lance. And he was asking Max about it, and Max was against it. I'm like, but remember who Max was? Max wasn't one of those bottom end guys, and and said, oh, and and doing more, doing more, um, what's it called, joint practices or whatever you call it, where they um, where they're playing with another team. Yeah, he's like, those weren't mandatory. That just they weren't. I don't. I didn't see that they were mandatory, but you were allowed to do more of them if you wanted right. to. And like I said to them, I'm like, that doesn't affect affect your upper level guys. That doesn't have, because you're not going to play those guys in those kind of things. They're just trying to give, if they're going to take away a preseason game, they want to give more opportunity to players 40 through 90 to show what they can do if they're going to have one less game to do it on the field. So that's what those kind of things are for. So, I mean, the preseason has value for, like I say, guys 40 to 90 really yeah. is who it's for. Um, th- th- this CBA was giving another, two more roster spots, two more roster spots, two more practice squad spots. That's, I mean, think of that. That's 64 more players getting full salary and another 64 getting practice squad salary. I mean, that's, that's a good thing. So, but they also, you know, I think the owners proposed a deal that was best for the majority of the players that they could get the majority of the players to get behind. The problem is, can you get it past those, those few high salary guys that are going to be really sticking about those, about those things and not really wanting the 17th game. I don't care if they play a 17th game. I w- honestly, I'd rather them add an extra week to the season, but have it be an extra bye week, make, make it an 18 week season where you get more TV coverage. Um, there just won't be quite as many games every week. So, but um, that's just that we, we should probably move on to the title of the show, but this is, yep, this is, the news I was like, going on. On. Yeah. well, this like, is the news that's going on right now. Get you so, rolling. so other news that happened today was uh, Kevin Colbert spoke at the combine. That's going to be the Q and a show coming up after this one. So we're going to save all that for the, for that point. We're going to talk about, I mean, it's funny because Jeff asked me, so so what's your show? I said, well, we're going to talk about defensive line. Okay, give me an angle. I'm like, uh, let's talk about replacing Javon Hargrave because we're going to talk about the defensive line as a whole. Um, you want to know what's crazy? What? I've got some stats and stuff with him. Uh-oh. But, but oh, me? Stats? Who would have nope. Um, But part of the other thing I did, kind of like I did with the offensive line, is I did look at the pro football focus rankings. Now, they are not the end all be all evaluation of every of a, of an NFL player but they do give you i think as much as anything they give you perspective to compare players to others around the league because i'm not watching the defensive line for the Detroit Lions you know i'm not watching the um the um the Arizona Cardinals defensive line any other time they're not playing the Steelers and even when they are playing the Steelers the only time i watch it is cuz i'm watching the Steelers offensive line so these are things that i just you know it, it really helps to to, to bring that in. And you want to know what this Steelers offensive line is crazy high ranked. Okay. They had, let's just look at the top four guys that are ranked of the Steelers defensive line from last season. They were, and just so you know, yes, Stefan to it qualified because he played in just enough games. Played enough games to qualify. Yes. So the top four ranked defensive linemen from the Steelers would have been Javon Hargrave. Javon Hargrave was one of them. Cameron Hayward. Cameron Hayward was one of them. Um, Stefan to it. Stefan to it. I told you that. And uh, see, th- th- that was the easy one. Hold on. Yeah. That's got to be. Because he had a who very play, who play, did it, but does it matter how much they play or just they just have to be active for? Well, they, they had to be they had to get I mean, X number snaps. X number snaps. Um, and it, honestly, he was the only other player on the Steelers that qualified enough to be officially ranked. Yeah, so, and it was um, Tyson Alualu, yeah, 
who wasn't flashy, but played well. People don't understand how well Alu Alu played this past year. He did his role. He did his job. He played very well. Steelers, those four, those four guys, okay, so four defensive linemen, four, when they're only ever playing at most three on the field at a time, and most of the time two, granted two it didn't play the last 10 games. How, what, give me a number of, within the league of how, how far you thought they all ranked in, like they all ranked in the top 150, or they all ranked in the top seven, you know, I'm going extreme either way. Any idea? About how they all fell? Because you probably, um, you, I don't think there's any way you can guess this. Top 45. Okay. Cut it in half. Really? And then cut it in half again. Oh, my gosh. We were that high. Try about four of the top 11. Wow. Four of the top 11. Four of the top 11. It was Cameron Hayward, number two overall behind Aaron Donald. That's why he was all pro all year. Correct. Stephon Tuitt, fifth. Okay. Just imagine. I mean, because we all know, we saw it. Just imagine he, what he'd have been had. He had, had, he had better year. numbers at the time he got hurt than what Cameron Hayward did. I mean, that would have been crazy. Javon Hardgrave, eighth. Tyson Alualu, eleventh. That is insane at how deep and productive this defensive line was. But you also got to look at. I mean. That's part of the reason we said, did you know, did Bud Dupree just suddenly wake up and get a bunch of numbers, or did he benefit from playing with the people that he was up front with? Because look, I mean, TJ Watt was the number one ranked um edge rusher. So look at that line. I mean, you've got a number one ranked edge yeah. rusher a number two ranked defensive lineman, a number five ranked defensive lineman, your nose tackle. I mean, and this isn't this isn't defensive tackle. This is just all called interior defensive line, grouping them all together. And that's what they were. I mean, they it was crazy. So, but there's a problem with this. The problem is when it comes to the salary cap, there is, <laughs> I actually broke it down based on last year's number to get an approximation of what percent of the salary cap the Steelers were spending on each position. Okay. Now, I mean, like it was like quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, safety, and corner. Left out those specialists. Who cares? Okay. So out of those 50 players, the, the problem is, is last year the Steelers' defensive line was almost 20% of their salary cap. Almost 20%. The, it, the only one that was higher of anything – was the offensive line, and that's because they were eight of them versus six of the defensive line. Right. So that's that's just that's one of those things. So I mean, they had I, I did it last year based on their the average per player towards the salary cap was over five million dollars on the defensive line. Okay, because it was over. I mean, it was thirty one point six million p- towards the defensive line, and that was with Javon Hargrave on a rookie deal. Yeah, he deserves to get paid close to Hayward and to it, but the Steelers just can't, they can't pay that amount of money for another player at that position. When, even though a lot of times you start three, it's only about 30% of the time, all three of them's on the field. Right. So it's just, it's just too difficult to invest that much money. In other words, Javon Hargrave ended up being too good to stay on the Steelers. I mean, pretty much everyone's realizing they're going to lose him. I hope he goes out, gets a monster deal, and gives him a high comp pick. Um, But I really, I'd love, man, it would be great if he could stick around, but there's just no way they can do it. There really isn't. So what's the answer? What do you think? What's the answer, Schofield? Yeah, what is it? (laughs) What, I mean, what are the, what are the, who was his backup last year? It Did was this, it, yeah, it was this big Dan three, big Dan McCullers, who is Jeff Hartman likes to say must have naked pictures of somebody in the Steelers organization. <laughs> yeah, for him to keep being on this team. So the question is, if that's the only other nose tackle on the roster, is he your is he your starting nose tackle? No. Well, yeah, and, and that's the thing. So, so what do you do? What do you do? My question is, if Stefan Tuitt's back, 
is it possible for the little bit of the time that you use a nose tackle for Alu Alu to bump for to bump down and play that position? Maybe. Okay. What does the live chat think? Yeah, I see you, Dennis. We always have good players um, that we have to let go every year. That's what happens when you draft when you draft well, um, and when you have to pay your other people, and when you build primarily through the draft, um, it is what it is. So, so that's a great question. Is Dan McCullers your starting nose tackle? Because, yes, you only use a nose tackle roughly thirty percent of the time anymore. The Steelers have over the last several seasons. But when you're playing one, you need one. And technically, he's a starter on your defense. So is that, do they have to draft one? Do they have the answer on their team? Because the only other, the only other, um, uh, sorry, defensive linemen that they have are Isaiah Bugs and Dan McCullers. And Bugs was a little bit higher ranked than McCullers, but he only saw 75 snaps on defense the whole season. So not a big sample size from the rookie, but we'll, but, but we'll see. Um, this is what Ryan Kellerman says. He, I'm pretty sure he's referring to Tyson Alu may not be a good nose tackle, but it'd be better than big Dan. So uh, another question was, is, is Henry, I can never see that. Mondu, I I assume. Yes. Is he still around? Yes, he yes. was on the practice squad all year and was assigned a futures contract. If the Steelers don't address the position of the draft, I would not be shocked one bit for him to slide into that sixth spot to be that guy that's probably inactive most games unless somebody's hurt. So um I I thought he looked great in the preseason. I thought he did last around. year too. Just yeah. Plays real, plays with a lot of leverage and just a real high motor. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just one of those things. I mean, do the Steelers kind of handle nose tackle on a rotating basis between Alu Alu Bugs and McCullers? Do they move on from McCullers and say, you know what, we're just going to go smaller and athletic at the position? So here, here's something that we might need. How about we look at their listed height and weight? Now, I, I pulled this off of Pro Football Reference. I don't know how often they update this. But um, there's there are two defensive linemen for the Steelers from 2019 that are under 300 pounds. And that was Cam Hayward at 6'5", 295, and Isaiah Bugs at 6'3", 295. Now, to it is 6'6", 303. Hargrave, your starting nose tackle, 6'2", 305. Where Tyson Alu Alu is 6'3, 304. So there's not that much difference in the size Powerful. there. Yep. If Alu Alu can go down, you know, and 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 play that position. I mean, he seemed like he was just just a scrappy stuffer last year, as much as anything. And that's what you want from your nose tackle. Where of course McCullers is 352 and 6'7. But uh when 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 you stand straight up half the time, you can get driven off the ball. But he's he has good moments, but they're very few and far between. Yeah, he has great moments in the preseason. Yeah, in the preseason. <laughs> so um <laughs> here we go. Kyle Smith signed Casey Hampton. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, I was thinking, I see I was going when we were talking about uh when you were talking about earlier, um I was thinking, you know what, you know. We, you know, I was thinking Joel Steed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. you know, we need to pay a guy like Joel Steed, not like, you know, yeah. but I don't see this as a position that the Steelers can address in free agency because what do we always say about that? With what money? With what money? So, what are they going to do? Can they use the players who weren't, who aren't your, your typical nose tackles? as nose tackle for the for the little bit you use it and get by. I don't know that I have the answer to this. I would love to say Tyson Alo Alo could definitely fill in down there. I just don't know if it's really if it if it really really would if it anybody would be, it would, it would be a little to, bit of it would be a little bit of a risk if it worked. Yeah, you know, if they did it and it worked, we'd look like geniuses. If we if we do it and doesn't work, it could be disastrous. It, it, exactly. But you also have to look at it as well. Here's the other thing: if you've got if you're going to run your base three four, so you don't have a nickel corner out there um, on the field. And think about it. Look at how much look at how much Mike Hilton 
and, and Cam Sutton played last year because those guys are on the field all the time. You're, it's so rare that a nose tackle is on, is on the field. But when you do, and let's say you have all three of, let's say, to it, Alo Alo and Hayward, maybe they're going to get creative and not even line up the same guy in the same spot every time. Maybe they can find an individual matchup and say, oh, wow, if we slide to it down here and put him in that center guard gap with the, with the two guys that they have, he could really exploit that in this situation. Or maybe Hayward. Or, out, you know, where you never know which guy's going to be where. I don't know if the Steelers are interested in doing that. So I, I really – it's a great question, but I don't – it's really hard to, to realize what the Steelers are going to be thinking here at this time. Uh, hard to tell. Uh, that's why, you know, want the CBA to get done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I went to, I, I, everybody was telling Dave right before we went on, I want the CBA to get done so we can rework some contracts, bump some money down the line and, you know, yeah, maybe be but, able to si- sign somebody if we need to. Because I keep seeing everyone saying, oh, we need to sign. I mean, there's some people that are so adamant about Derrick Henry. I'm like, Derrick Henry is going to break the bank. I'm like, there's with the way he he ran in the playoffs. Derrick Henry, for those of you that really want Derrick Henry, I'm going to tell you this. Two words. Joe Flacco. What did he do? He came in in a contract year, came in as a sixth seed in the playoffs, and started tearing up in the playoffs and went all the way to the Super Bowl. And I said to a Ravens fan of mine, I said, better win it now because you're going to struggle to get back there. He says, why is that? I'm like, because even if y'all are going to pay him, you're going to have to pay him, even if you don't win it all this year, because of how he's played in the, in the playoffs. And then you're turning around paying all this money to someone because they had a great postseason, And are they going to necessarily do it again? So it uh, doesn't mean that Derek Henry is going to be a Joe Flacco syndrome person, but you got to always be weary of the guy that showed up at the last minute and demanded a big contract, <laughs> Bud Dupree. Um, yeah. You, you got to be cautious of it. You can't break the bank for just one situation like that. Um, but Derrick Henry had been a great runner before that, but what's just going to make it – but that just made his value skyrocket uh, the last the last week of the, of the regular season and the playoffs. So – it is what it is with what money is what, what, what keep people keep saying, but I see people saying, Oh, we should sign this person, that person, that person. I'll just restructure some stuff. The only person with the current 30% rule, of the CBA, the only person where you can get any kind of money of any significance because of this rule would be Ben Roethlisberger. And do you know how much you could, you could maximum get out of him by, by bumping out his salary, which would be, you know, make his cap hit next year even worse, which you don't want that, but 3.2 million. Basically the only guy you can restructure can give you 3.2 million. And that's it. You can't do it this way. Like the Steelers normally do it. Uh, they're just going to have to cut people. So it's just crazy. It, it's just crazy how it's all working out. So that's why I keep checking my phone here to see if anything happened. There you go. I, I like double HH comment on here uh i almost said it earlier when you were asking about what do we do with those tackle he says switch zach banner to dl <laughs> <laughs> i i oh, i love you reporting is banner. eligible yeah reporting right. is eligible on defense um we did th- wow i didn't check it for 25 minutes um nfl spokesman brian mccarthy as you can tell the meeting just concluded and out of respect for the process we're not going to comment further at this time so owners and players are dispersing after about four hours together. They were expecting a vote tonight from the players, but I don't know if that'll happen. We'll see. Um, um, Art Rooney was there, you know, departed at the same time. They saw him there. And I don't see that there's anything coming out yet of that about that news about the CBA, but we'll keep our eye on it. Um, for those of you joining us live and for those of you um, who are listening to this later on, you're probably like, yeah, I don't care. That's old news. So do you think the Steelers are set for defensive line for 2020? No, something's going to change. Okay. But I have no clue what okay. that's going to be. Yeah. I mean, 
How do you feel that there's any way that Javon Hargrave is back with the Steelers next year? I really doubt it. Yeah, same here. I mean, if something I, I, happened, like, they put like it off. 90, I would be I'm like, like yes. I'm like but, ninety yeah. percent plus that he's gone. I mean, you you as bad as I. I mean, I think he's a great player. I think he's a great human being. And as much as I would love for him to stay in Pittsburgh, and he said he would love to stay in Pittsburgh, um, it just sometimes you just can't do it. Right. I want him. Yeah, I want him. Yeah, but I just don't see how we're going to be able to make it work. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We're getting some zero percent to five percent, um, and then there's Dennis who says, "I believe in miracles." That I mean, what would have you more excited? The Steelers signing a different free agent that some people want to bring in, or the Steelers actually being able to keep Javon Hargrave? I'd rather keep Hargrave. I'd rather keep Hargrave. I don't want anybody else out there. I would rather have him, but they, they, he's, I mean, he's going to bring more salary than they're going to pay anybody else. And that's assuming there's a new CBA. Right. So that's, that, that's crazy. So, um, hopefully we, the, the stats can continue to roll in from last year. Cause you know, um, Hargrave, he, he was, his sack numbers were actually down last year. He had six and a half the year before and he had four last year, but that's still crazy for, for a nose tackle. Um, and, and two, it had three and a half before he got hurt. And, uh, Hayward didn't quite get to that double digits. He had nine, but man, did you there know you that? Hey, F- Fattius brings up a good question because it's something we didn't, we didn't talk about. Okay. He says, Dave, if Bud Dupree walks, what would it cost to franchise tag? <laughs> yeah, I looked at that. See, because I looked at that when I did the article of if they're going under the last year, of the CBA, this is part of the reason they bumped back the franchise tag period two days. It was supposed to start today. It's not going to start till Thursday. And then there's two more days at the end is because in the last year of a C of the CBA, you can have both a franchise and a transition tag. You could use both. Right. The problem is with when it comes to Hargrave, it's only 2 million cheaper than what it would be for Dupree. Uh, not worth- yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it was, if it was 5 million cheaper, I'd be like, no, just, do Hargrave, forget Dupree, right? And do Hargrave, but that, so that's a great question. But yeah, because they don't have they don't have a franchise tag designation for nose tackles. It's interior de- is what it is. Interior defensive lineman. Yes. Yep. So that's the option. Because man, I would have been like perfect transition one, franchise the other, see what you can do. Yeah, and I, it's like it's like. 14 to 14 and a half million is if I remember off the top of my head if it, for the franchise tag at that position, but it's, um, it, it's still up there. It's still up there, but, uh, that's, that's where they're sitting. I mean, right now the Steelers are going to have to cut an awful lot of people if they're going to keep either one of those guys and the priority now has, you know, it's got to be Dupree. And then like I, I wrote an article before that I've, that I've mentioned, don't fret about TJ Watt because when TJ Watt, when it's time for him to get paid is when they're not going to have to pay Ben Roethlisberger anymore. And yep. he's going to get Ben's money. Yep. He's, he's going to take up Ben's chunk. Don't worry. There's no way. There's no way you have to worry about that. The Steelers have enough money for what, what you're going to have to worry about is them having enough money after they give him the enormous deal that he deserves. So it'll be interesting to see what the Steelers do at nose tackle. Like I say, it's a position that doesn't play a ton, but when, when you need them, you got to have one. So at this time, I think we're going to, I, I think we're going to go ahead and call it a, a show to transition into the other stuff that we can talk about um, from Kevin Colbert's time with the, with the combine um, when he spoke to the media today. And if there's any other news about the CBA, but this was really, this is really, I think the Steelers, if you could say, Oh man, the Steelers lost one of their best defensive linemen. Oh wait, they still have got three ranked in the top 11 in the league. Right. What what a what a great deal. What a great deal. So I mean, I actually saw people early in the season saying that all other than people really don't want to let Hargrave go. I've even seen crazy suggestions of each of the other three to let go. People are like let Alawala go. I'm like, he's cheap. Why are we letting him go? Okay. To it. To it would cost more money to let him go than it would be to keep him. And then Cam, you could save a lot of him, but I mean, come on. He's He's, he's can't. I mean, he's, he's kind he's of the, he's, yeah. You can't have a winning franchise if you if you let players like that go. So, um, 
there's other options that the Steelers have. So just want to say thank you all who've joined in the live chat. I know we didn't focus on you quite as much during the show. We mentioned it some, but we will focus on you more in the next one. Um, if you have any questions or anything, get those super chats ready. If, if you want to type in that question, hit the dollar sign, donate any amount of money you want to the show. We'll bring it up. We'll take care of it. No problem. Um, but yeah, save it for the next one rather than this right now. For those of you listening in podcast form, you might be listening to this Wednesday morning and be like, wait a second. I thought you were coming right back. The second show will be available sometime in the early afternoon on Wednesday. Don't worry about using the super chat feature. What you can worry about is going in, liking the video, giving the good ratings on, on wherever you listen to your podcasts and subscribing to the channel. And although none of the other podcasts are saying this, I'm saying it. If you haven't already go like behind the steel curtain on Facebook, because we're really close to a hundred, hundred thousand followers. So, and if not, you've got to be checking out behind the steel curtain.com your one-stop shop for all things Pittsburgh Steelers. I was leaving the store yesterday and i had someone come up to me i was wearing my my sb nation shirt and they're like oh how they're like is that an organization you gotta i'm like no this is a website this is free you don't have to pay for the content you just come you read you you check it out you sign up for an account you you discuss stuff in the comments all kinds of great stuff going on there lots of great articles i mean i'm just even looking at our dashboard and the articles that are still haven't been published yet i'm like we've got some good stuff that that we're just trying to get to later on in the week so make sure you're hitting that like button and hopefully we'll see you here for those of you joining us live hopefully we'll see you here in a few minutes anything else you want to say rich no come on over and ask the questions we'll see what we can do to get get them answered they right, might sound- not be good answers but yeah. we'll answer them yeah i mean it mean, doesn't mean we're right it just means we'll we'll throw out our are uh, hopefully not ridiculous opinions. I, I, I'm going to talk about some ridiculous opinions when we start the next show. So uh, uh, thank you very much. Tune in, tell a friend, and subscribe. Thanks for geeking out with us. <laughs>